Can't you find nothing to do? Well, that's all very quiet. Half a lovely music. Well, keep your eye on that little team at the bar. They look like trouble. Anything you say, team. Fellas, you are definitely on an invite back. Oh, great. Here you go. It's funny. Something the matter? He was told he was getting 70. Told? Who told you that? Well, Sammy. You said 70, didn't you? Yeah. Well, that's what you said, Chris, when I fixed the gig. 70? Oh, I said 70. Hey, John. I think they're superstars. Well, 20 quid, it's hardly worth a while. I mean, knock-off transport, but left with about two quid each. I don't know. I don't understand you kids. I mean, you spend most of your time on the social security or gigging in pubs. I give you an opportunity to build up a personal following. I mean, you do want an invite back, don't you? Yeah, naturally. Then take your 20. And show a bit of gratitude as well. John. John. No, we don't want no aggravation, do we? It's been a genuine misunderstanding. Right, Barry? Yeah, right. I think you went down quite well. Really nice. Thanks. So listen, drop back in a couple of days. We'll talk about a return engagement. OK. Yeah, thanks a lot, Chris. See you, fellas. Stop fearing that now, John. OK, that's it for the night, Don't forget, we'll be back with you tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. A solid soul night. Until then, good night and be careful. Hey, what's drink? Where's my drink gone? Oh, it doesn't matter, Alan. It doesn't matter. You're kidding. Full Bacardi and Coke. Excuse me. I had a full drink there. They take it away. We're closed. It's not an all-night bloody drinking club. Full drink? I haven't even touched it. Shut up and get out. Listen, I had a full drink on that table. Are you trying to make trouble? I'm going to complain about you. Take your hands off me. Take your hands off me. They weren't exactly the wild bunch, were they? Now, who do I see about getting paid? Me. Well? No, should be three of those. Ten of them. And another fiver for VAT. Now, look here, pal. Now, don't give me any look here, pal business. A mate of mine phoned me up, asked me to stand in for him, right? He said three fivers. That's what I'm leaving here with. How terribly kind. And the next time your mate can't make it, I'll find a debt. With the money you're paying, you'll probably get Mohammed Ali, won't you? It's all these dopey jobs you get involved with. Well, Dennis wanted a night off. <laughs> Dennis will be having a lot of nights off. How do you mean? Did you see the papers? No. <laughs> Four of them. Thought they had it away with a Belgian juggernaut. Six old bills sitting in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, Lord. <laughs> Your name was up for that and all. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? 
I said, no, not my Terry. You don't want to know about pickaxe handles and shooters. Not that I've gone over to the other side, I said. It's just that, like Sweden during the war, we're declaring our neutrality. <laughs> oh, my good God, what's this? What have you done, Arthur? Stum, Terry. Very, very stum. Hello, Mr. Chisholm. I never knew this was your gaff, Arthur. I didn't say it was. What's the trouble? I mean, we've got no record of you as landlord, tenant, or registered keyholder. What's the problem? You've had the burglars round. <laughs> Don't suppose you caught them. Patrol car spotted them. Oh. But we're not sure where they uh, coming out or still trying to get in. It is your place, is it? Yeah, well, sort of. Well, let's take a look inside and we'll see if they've got away with anything. No, 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 no. Not necessary at all. What have you got in there? Odds and ends. It's very nice of you fellas to uh, take an interest. I'll let you know if there's anything missing. Yeah, all right, Arthur. You'll be well insured, I suppose. No worries. National fidelity. Ah, Terry. Well, just remember, Arthur, if you're going away for the weekend, don't forget to inform your local police station. <sighs> There's certainty to get your gap turned over then. See you, Mr Chisholm. All right, Arthur. No wonder Sir Keith Joseph keeps on about law and order. I have everywhere you look. Tea leaves. Shut the door. Oh, oh. oh my. You're at the long firm again, aren't you? What are you talking about? I paid for all this. Spent gear, innit? You want to get me nicked again, don't you? Terry, this is all kosher. Then why didn't you want the law to have a look? Because it's none of their business. Do you think they have the law poking their nose in every five minutes down at Arrods? <laughs> nice suit. Swedish. Hey, you like a nice Oscar Jacobson, don't you? Get your jacket off. Try this one on. <laughs> Just your colour. Grey herring bone. There we are. Listen, just because I'm trying it on, don't mean to say I've bought it. No bother. 130 quid in the shops. Oh, yes, oh, yes, you look the business in that, my son. No bother. <laughs> oh, yes, you can have that one. 70. Do what? All right, then give me 50. Listen, I wouldn't pay 50 for a suit that fitted. Now, come on, Arthur. This is all bent, isn't it? Terry, on my landlord's life, this is all straight. I have got bills of sale, receipts, invoices. Show me, then. No, the, 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 the fellas bring it round. The insurance people. Container, burst open. Happens all the time. All I'd done was buy a job lot. It's all export stuff. Export? You just said this was made in Sweden. Yeah, well, import as well. Now, look, how about this? 500 copies of the digest edition of the collected works of Charles Breeden Dickens. Now, you're not going to tell me that's Swedish, are you? Now, what we've got to do is shift this lot and get some stronger locks for those doors. And... And what? Work out who it was who sussed the gear was here and tried to break in last night. I suppose it's never occurred to you that it might be a few pals of the geezer you bought it off of. You know what, young Terence? It probably was. Knocking these out at three quid a bottle. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right, isn't it? Go in there tonight, buy three large ones, you bought yourself a bottle back. <laughs> Very clever. Bloody publicans. Three weeks and I'll be out of pocket. The shadow of your smile when you are gone will color all my dreams. Light the dawn. Look into my eyes, my love, and see all the lovely things you are. She's in the nostalgia 
see. Oh, yeah. A wistful little star was far too high. A teardrop kissed your lips. Dear old Lord. Good wait, we're up to your pub, innit? Oh, now that's what I really call a song. Hey. What a knockout. Hey? All the joys of love they bring. I will be rich. It's hardly a capital chart climber, is it? Well, don't tell me you know about music for God's sake. That, that, um, was, um, 1965, if my memory serves me right. Liz Taylor and uh, the Welshman, uh, what's his name, in the film. 65? Yeah. Here, Cassius Clay changed his name. After dumping Liston, after one minute in the first. You can't fault me on history, my son. When did Harold get in the eye? Oh, I don't know, I didn't see that fight. The shadow of your smile. Smile. Beautiful. Knockout. Oh, tar. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Diane. Basically, it's a rock and roll pub, you know what I mean? So, um. So, you don't want to know? No, I don't. You're all the bloody same, you lot. Hey, 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 hey. Da, da, da. Leave it to me. <coughs> Just a minute, little lady. Don't you let that lot in there upset you. <laughs> they don't appreciate anything good. Them sort of people. Of course they don't. It's only a boozer, Friday night full of yobbos. See, my dear, your style is more your talk of the town, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I think. Come on, dry them little tears. You got a motor? Where'd you live? Down the Fulham Road. Oh, oh well, I, uh, I'd better give you a lift home then, eh? Oh, lovely. It's a nice anky. Mm. It's silk, isn't it? I've got another couple of dozen of them. Oh, go with different suits, you know. Come on. All right. Are you in the business then? <laughs> I'm Arthur Daly. I'm Sharon Nightingale. It's not my real name, of course. What, Sharon? No. <laughs> no, Nightingale. Sounds better than Dobbs, anyway. I thought you must be in the business. Being so appreciative and everything. Well, I tell you, Sharon, I have lots of contacts in the uh, business, you know, clubs, hotels. I was having a drink with Jimmy Savile the other night. The charity dinner we were at, you know. I tell you, Sharon, contacts is the name of the oh. game. Yeah, I know. That could be a lot of help to you in your career, you know. Make sure you get the right promotion. The proper handling. Yeah, that's what I think. Married? No. Fella at the pub, you, your boyfriend? Oh, no, nothing like that, no. He wants to be an agent. He's been to Pittman's Business College and everything. <laughs> nice. Did you see that? Ah! Yeah, shop window address. Really nice. I mean, beautiful. I thought I was witness to a robbery or something. We couldn't just go back a bit, could we? Just so as I could have a look. Yeah, of course. Oh, thanks. And you, China! It's like you said, Arthur. Presentation is everything in this game, isn't it? Of course it is. I mean, look at, look at the gear that Shirley Bassey wears. See, on the stage, singing my sort of songs... It would look beautiful. Do you want to try it on? Oh, Arthur. Should I? When you're with Arthur Daly, sweetheart, it's cabaret time. Live a little, eh?
Long lying. Oh yeah. With her indoors, hoovering round the bed all the time. Oh, oh I didn't get in till four. Oh, dear, oh dear. Who was it? Singing scrubber. What did you call her? You heard. She is a very special young lady, Terry. Oh yeah. What are her specialities then, eh? Oh, hey, yeah, hey. that's all you would understand, isn't it? Nice girl, nice company, plus. Plus. Enormous. Does it begin with T? Talent. Enormous talent. Oh. I thought you were going to say something else for a minute. Yeah, you would. Hey, I thought Jackie Strong was coming for these jeans. He was, and he did. He said these jeans with the famous label were all made in Albania and would last about two weeks, which would ruin his reputation as an honest trader of Danamarki. Yeah, Bandu. He was only selling Christian Dior perfume the other week, made up by a little packy in his council flat kitchen by QPR Stadium, no less. <laughs> well, listen, come on, you were going to tell me about this enormous talent. That girl is going to be a superstar. I'll be her manager. I'll give it two years. We'll be tax havening it in the Cayman Islands. Caravanning it down to Canvey Island, you mean? Do you know what you know? Nothing. You forget I still have friends in Clubland. I'm still owed a few favours, so I start making a few calls. Like where? Like where? Top places, like the uh, Blue Camellia. The what? The what, he says. <laughs> Only one of the most exclusive nighters in the West End, in German Street. You know where that is? Arthur, that was closed down in the swinging 60s, along with all the other places like that. The Golden Bangle? <laughs> lavish Floor Show? The Lavish Floor Show now consists of a geezer putting on records while three Debs and a rock star have hamburgers and chips. Oh, all those beautiful places. We lost India and all. Yeah. Yeah, look, don't wind me up on history, Terry. Sorry. No, see, I, uh, I don't do the West End much these days. I mean... How do they start, you know? All the kids, top of the pops. Where do they start? Don't know, really. Pubs, I suppose. Hey, that place you were working the other night. That's, uh, that's music, isn't it? Well, that's what they called it, yeah. Oh, what's the guy's name? The head man? How do I know? I was sitting on the subs bench for a bouncer. Look, you make it your job to know. That's how you get on in the world. Hey, hey, what am I supposed to do now? Oh, yeah, look, all their metric sizes, change them into the approximate English equivalent, all right? Hey? Yeah, hey. Think about it. Give them little muscles up there a chance for a workout. Five hundred kids and psychedelic lights, it all looks a bit different. I'm very glad to hear it. Anyway, you, uh, you probably know my name well enough, Arthur Daly. Can't say I do, really. No, no, it's a little bit off my manner. Well, the thing is, I've got this good girl singer. Uh, maybe you should let me decide that. What? Whether she's very good. Got a demo? Got a what? Cassette. Yeah, now, look, just take my word for it, eh? Did you get that toy for Christmas? Friend of mine. Got the number five in the charts. We, uh, get a lot of presents. Only way to do business, isn't it? Presents given, favours done. Everybody's happy. You want the record companies here. You want the booking managers, television people. Takes a lot of arranging. Phone calls, drinks, the musical press. Yeah, all that. Backing, top musicians. I mean, that'll set you back 300 for a start. My time, my staff's time, all the arrangements, the hassles, my reputation. Maybe joint management of a liker. What does it all add up to? Simple figures, six. Reddies. Well, no, no, no. No arguments, no haggling. 600 up front, that's it. Good chick singer. I mean, you could end up making a fortune. Well, man, in my experience, why would I be interested otherwise? <laughs> <laughs> Best to go now, Arthur. Oh, don't I get a cup of coffee? Well, I'd really like to, but um, it's the other girls. See. I understand, my darling. Don't you worry. We'll have you out of here before long. Arthur, mm -hmm. you've been really wonderful to me. <laughs> nothing. That Chinese meal. Never had nothing like that before. Well, they know I like a good king prawn in there. And going on at the music room. 
That's really, really unbelievable. What I told you, I'm well known, respected. Probably get a record contract out of it. No, no. Yeah, I've got a lot of record people coming down, personal acquaintances. Oh, Arthur. <laughs> we, uh, we get things sorted out. We'll go away for a few days, eh? Marbella, you been there? That's all those racing drivers live there. That's don't right, they? yeah. James Hunt and all that lot. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Nicky Shouter. Yeah. Arthur, you know what we were saying earlier? You know about the difference in ages and everything? Mm hmm. I don't think it matters. No, of course it don't. I mean, all the stars do it, don't they? Yeah. It's like they need a more mature man. And you are a star, my darling. <laughs> You uh, won't get in trouble or nothing at home, will you? Share on my darling, I've told you. I know how to handle everything. Bye. Shambles. What are you doing? Is this an early start or a late finish? Early indoors. Locked me out, didn't she? <laughs> Thought you had her train. Yeah. I was giving Cher on a bell from home. She was ear holding on the extension. Yeah, I saw the film. Oi! Thought I get a cup of tea or something? If you brought your own tea bag. You got a duvet or something? Uh yeah, there's a tartan travel rug on in one of those covers. This is a Kazi, you know that. The Kazi's through there. Simon come about them jeans. Did Simon come about them jeans? Yes, yeah, Simon did come about those bloody jeans. He said they're all made in Albania, and Levi's is spelt with an I and not a Y. <laughs> oh, I love the garters. What's everyone got against Albania? They were on our side during the war. Blah. Hey, look, this has got stuff all over it. It's probably wheat germ. It's really bloody germ by the look of it. I might get a flat with that share on. Arthur, you're an happily married man. Yeah, she got her cards tonight. I told her. I thought you said she locked the door on you. I shouted through the letterbox. Poor, oh, this cushion could do with a visit to Sketchley's and all. Oh! Oi! Oi! What? Wake me a quarter to eight. What for? Got to take the kids to school, haven't I? Yeah, I forgot. What? Well, they don't arrive in a Daimler. Get expelled, don't they? Oh, shut up, Terry. I'm trying to get to sleep. Terry? What? Put the light out. Of us rehearsing one of my numbers now, is there? Oh, yeah, sure. What do you want to do? Who can I turn to? Okay. Well, I don't know, do I? You're the pianist. You're the one who's supposed to know about things like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's this one in it. Uh... Yeah, but that's too high. And I do it ever so slow. Oh, all right. Uh, well, as, as the man said, uh, you start with folly. All right. I won't. I never even heard of it. Shut up. What do you mean you don't fancy it? Well, it's not my scene, is it, that kind of music? I am launching a star. Well, there ain't going to be any writers down there, are there? And you'll be glad handing it all over the place. 
You don't need me, mate. Thought you might like to share in a moment of triumph. Look, I've said good luck and all that, haven't I? Anyway, I've been doing that metrication all day. Gonna meet a bird at nine. Bring her down! I promised to take her for a Greek meal. Well, give her a quick donna kebab and chips and bring her down. No, she's into soul music. I'll tell you what, I'll see how it goes, all right? Oh, thank you. Very considerate. <laughs> oh, and, uh, Arthur. You know the sofa situation. Not tonight, eh? Have I asked? No, but... Hotel's all over the place, you know. Well, it's all right then, isn't it? Terrific. <laughs> Might one inquire who is this little creature that makes you forsake your friends? Aerostis. Oh, not the little dark hair job. Yes. I mean, she's not exactly jet set, is she? I mean, she's not I'm Mandy, fly me to Dallas, Texas. No, her name is Penny and she works on the uh, London to Manchester shuttle service. No, you don't exactly have to be fluent in three languages for that, do you? All she needs is a good umbrella. At least she don't sing. Terence. <laughs> turn to when nobody needs me my heart wants to know and so I must go where destiny leads me with no one to guide me and no one beside me I'll go on my way and after the day the darkness will hide me And maybe tomorrow I'll Where is everybody? Monday night, isn't it? Anyway, most nights I don't come in till the booze is closed. Yeah, of vodka, is it? Where is everybody? Oh, I don't know. The record producers, the faces, the guests. Oh, I didn't show. We'll be doing come dancing next week. <laughs> Stick another vodka in there. I would now like to do a lovely love song called The Shadow of Your Smile. The Shadow of Your Smile. Okay, sorry about that. This is your DJ here at the music room, and here we go with our first number. <laughs> Don't you fret, my darling. They're all pigs. All of them. They don't appreciate nothing. No, no, you're quite right, my dear. Dress look nice, sir. <laughs> Sorry, Sharon, wasn't very much together. You and your band, you would have been nicked. That wasn't our fault. Well, whose fault was it, then? Well, she just said a few bum notes, that's all. Bum notes? You weren't exactly meant to varnish yourself. Who? Who, oh, he says. Matt O'Varney. Famous musician, bloody great orchestra, could play anything. Oh, well, the difficult numbers for a band like ours. Listen, for 300 quid a go, you should be able to get through the Warsaw Concerto. 300? Your poxy fee. We got 25 quid, and that's a five more than last time. What did you say? 25? Dry her tears. 
<laughs> you, you turn me over. Now, calm down, Mr. Daly. Calm down, you had 600 quid off me. She went on, she went off. Not my fault. Where are the people? The record producers, the celebs. Didn't show. Invites, telephone calls, did I try my best job? Worked our fingers to the bone, didn't we? You're lying. I want my dough back. Then all I can suggest is that you put the matter in the hands of your legal advisors. I don't have legal advisors, Sonny. I have people who come round and punch your little head in. That's a very nasty threat, Mr. Daly. Made in front of witnesses. Perhaps you'd better show Mr. Daly the door, John. Hey, watch it, watch it. That's an 80 guinea velvet. And we don't want it messed up now, do we, Mr. Daly? You don't know me, son, do you? Well, we have heard the name. What was that old election slogan? Yesterday's people. <laughs> That's a trouble, ain't it, Mr. Daly? Times change, don't they? See ya. Here, I cracked it with this metrication. You see, one inch equals two and a half centimetres. Yeah, well, forget all that. They had me over, Terry. No stars on Sunday. That Chris is going to be seeing some stars. 40? That's a 17 collar. Near enough. Collar? I thought it was a chest size. They tucked me up very nice. Poxy band, record executives, producers. They had about ten squatters in the place, sharing half a pint of shandy between them. <laughs> well, that's show business, Arthur. It's diabolical business. 600 sobs. That man, that little flash Chris, he stole my money. And that is a crime. That is a liberty. So you forget all that metrication and get over there and give him a pull. Get the money back? Right. Well, supposedly he don't want to pay. Then he gets a spank. And he keeps getting spanked till he does want to pay. Hmm. What do you mean? Hmm. I mean, those days are over, aren't they? Eh? Putting the frighteners on. Helping one of the chaps out. Collecting bad gambling debts. Gambling debt? That man stole my money! No, he didn't, Arthur. He just ripped you off, which is your game, innit? I mean, how many mug punters have you had over, eh? Now, you thought you were on a winner, didn't you, with Fulham's answer to Dusty Springfield? But you were wrong. All right? You lost. So what? Tough. The man threatened me. Oh, what's he gonna do? Hit you over the head with his silver bracelet? Yeah, Mark. I mean, here you are supposed to be minding out for me. I'll come to you with a genuine grievance and you don't want to know. That's going to sound good on a man, isn't it? That's going to do a lot for my image. <laughs> Your image? Listen, Sunshine, I am a highly respected person. Oh, yeah? And where would that be, Sunshine? A few afternoon drinking clubs, car auctions, a few old villains with long memories. I don't know what's got into you. I mean, have I, have I, have I or have I not done you a favour or three? Oh, four even. Looked after your mum while you were away? Here we go, yeah. Drop round with a few prezzies? Oh, yeah. A nice set of Draylon curtains, as advertised on Police 5. She can't live without them. Set you up when you came out? You're getting there, Arthur. But now you're setting me up to go back in again. Look, I'm not asking you to go and shoot the geezer. All I want is a little friendly retribution. I'm sorry, Arthur, I'm not doing it. Look. He nicked 600 out of my pocket. And what you are saying is I should just stand for that, eh? No, I'm not saying that. Well, what are you saying, then? Well, there's got to be something else in there. I don't know. Solicitor's letters. I mean, 600, it's high finance, isn't it? Just sussed it. Bottle job. Uh-uh. Happens. You said so yourself in the past. There is always going to be somebody better. Well, it has come to pass. That Chris has got himself well protected, you've made your decision. Swallowed it. Oi. Look at me. Am I trembling? The guy I got down there, I could have him over in ten seconds, including the count. Of course you could. Then you'd have a whack at that Chris, walk out with the money, and there'd be a nice drink in it for you. Yeah. And then little Chris phones the old bill, I get done for assault and demanding money with menaces. Look, can't I get it through to you? I'm not doing it. End a message. All right. End of job. Job? I suppose redundancy pays out of the question. Oi. My biro and notebook. Yeah. I 
Don't want to be found ripping you off for a borrowed notebook. I mean, you might get a contract out on me. Have a little meal together tonight? Oh, I don't think that I can tonight, Arthur. And why not? What? I was going to rehearse, see? Where? Well, I don't really know. Um, you know Barry, the keyboard player? Well, he was going to teach me all about chromatic scales and that. But he was diabolical. No, no, he's good. He really is. Uh, you see, last night wasn't really his fault. I tell you what. Can you phone me back later, and then I'll tell you where I'm going to be, all right? You know, I'm thinking of doing a whole new act. A whole new act, eh? Yeah, all right. Now, now, look, don't you worry, my love. I'll call you later. Bye. Bye. Five minutes. You do this? Well, you can't say it didn't need it. Oh, I think I'd better have you living in. Yeah, I don't spoil my uniform. I want to look all fresh and alluring for all those fellas who want to fly me to sun drenched Manchester. Oh. Do that out there. You're more romantic. Come back specially to see me. Well, no, not really. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a bonus, but uh, I had a row with Arthur. Oh, your best friend? <laughs> Great pal. All well, that man is like a dad to me. Yeah, well, best friend wants a favour, but could land me up somewhere where I haven't been for a few years. Oh, don't do it, cos I miss you. Yeah, but a pal is a pal is a pal. Oh, somebody hurt him. Only where it hurts most. Pocket. <laughs> Pardon the expression, but I've got to fly. Got three days off in eight days' time. Oh. Thought I'd spend it in London. Be a lot more fun if you weren't in Worms Scrubs. <laughs> Phone you, OK? OK. Oh. And another thing. You love me. Yeah. But get some new bags for your vacuum cleaner. Ta-da. Do you know what, son? You're a right little charmer. Well, to tell the truth, Arthur, I'm sorry to hear it. Happens. Forsake not an old friend, as a good book has it. That's what he done. Dave, I'm not asking you to take sides, but if Terry had been where he should have been, it would never have happened. I was heavily outnumbered. Outgunned, you might say. What? They had to shoot us out? Figuratively. I'll put it not stronger than that. I'll get out, will you, Jimmy? Okay. Yeah, squeeze another one there, Arthur. I don't see why not. It's Vic Piner. Ah. Yeah. Well, you can just leave the door closed. Says he's got to meet with Arthur. Yeah, that's right. Leave it out, Arthur. That man's barred. In my company? Oh, I vouch for him. All right. You're joking. No, we just want to discuss a little business. I'm sorry. I'm not here. I mean, no disrespect to you, Arthur. But that man has upset so many people. He don't come in, and that's that. Well, I'm certainly learning something about friends today, eh? Cheers. <laughs> you're, uh, you're not very popular, Vic. He slagged me off. No, 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 no. Take it easy, take it easy. No, just said you were barred. Didn't cast any aspersions on you. We uh, we better go and have a cup of tea somewhere. 
she? Oh, are there any licensed premises on the manor where you're not barred? Uh, no. I wonder why. I get picked on a lot, see? People look at me, they think, oh, who does he think he is? So I tell them. Same thing with me brothers. So you've got to stand by him, haven't you? I mean, family. Oh, yeah. Family is a very precious thing. What some geese are done over, do you? <laughs> no, just, just uh, persuaded to pay a little debt. Yeah. We'll drop round me brother's yard. Oh, uh, well, no, I don't, I don't think it's a matter for the whole family, Pine. No, it's only round the corner. Just drop by. Thank you. Well, don't tell him I told you that. I mean, don't say I phoned. But that Vic, they wouldn't even welcome him in Broadmoor. Yeah, but he's over 21, isn't he? He's made his decision. Yeah, but Terry, if that goes wrong, and it could, your old pal, and never mind a falling out, your old pal, he's up for conspiracy to murder. Should have heard her sing and all. See Henry's collection. Hey. Antique, that is. Austin 7 starting handle. And this? Who? Oh. World War One, that is. Yeah, I'll keep it nice. They, uh, they all been used. Oh, yeah. I mean, depending how much you want to earn them. Any one of those could kill somebody. But... Oh, easy. I don't want anyone killed. Just frightened a bit, you know. <laughs> well, you tell him you're going to kill him, you'll probably frighten him, won't you? <laughs> he only owes me 600 quid. Well, let's say now he only owes you 300, eh? See what I mean? Oi! What's your game? I need to talk to you. John! John! Never mind, John. I've come here to help you. Now be quiet and listen. You had Arthur Daly over, all right? OK, good luck to you. The only problem is, Arthur is a bit tight with his mummy. If you've come here to threaten me... Just shut up and listen, will you? Have you ever heard of Vic Piner? No, I will. Muscles here, must have, haven't you? Yeah. He's a nutter. Mad Vic. Now, if he gets hold of you, you'll need more than that St. Christopher to get you home. He's right, Chris. What's he gonna do, then? Well, what he wants to do is come in here, take the money, and then give you a good hiding just for the fun of it. And what's your angle? Oh, you're one of those, are you? Everyone has to have an angle. Well, mine's quite simple. Arthur Daly is an old mate of mine, and I can't afford the petrol to go and see him if they lock him up. Secondly, I don't see why you should get your legs broken just for being too greedy. Hey, no, 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 no. No, we'll, uh, we'll try the stage door around the back. Bit early for the dancing, aren't you? What are you doing here? Oh, I've just been chatting to my friend Chris. He tenders his apologies and he says that you left this in his office. 400. Well, he reckons he's due 200 on account of first teaching you a lesson and secondly having to listen to that bird sing. All right. Reasonable. Of course, it's a wasted journey for young Victor here, isn't it? Oi. You just nicked my job. Job? You're not even on the firm, son. I was on 300. Oh. What's that? 100 a year? You bastard! I'm surprised at you, Arthur. I always made you a good judge of a fighter. Yeah. Right. Hey, can you hear? Yeah. Look, I'll do a deal with you, Sunshine. You and your brothers don't start a war, and I won't tell a soul that it only took one good left hand there to knock you spark out, all right?
Clever, eh? See, together you and me are very, very clever, Terry. Putting Mad Vic on him wasn't too clever, was it? Wasn't it? What well, was it? Well, it got you working quick, didn't it? Oh, my God, what now? Did you this time, Arthur? Cleaned you out. There was nothing in here, Mr. Chisholm. Nothing? Odds and ends. All we found was a few records. Musical, that is, not criminal. <laughs> yeah, he's very partial to music, he's young Arthur. Yeah, I used to be in the business. I used to manage a girl singer. Oh, yeah? What happened to her then? Well, you know the way the kids are these days. Ran off with a tone deaf piano player. But that's showbiz, isn't it, Mr. Chisholm? There was nothing in here. No. Odds and ends. Mm. 